Hi, and welcome back to The Sandbar, my DIY speakeasy carved out of sandstone out here at Sandland. Today, we're doing a few improvements over the prior video. I'm going to increase my headroom here because it's honestly a little bit low. We're going to arch the ceiling a little bit more, and then I'm going to finish carving out behind the bar because this slot that I stand in right now isn't really the full bar width. So I'm going to push that that way, push the ceiling up, and if we have time, we're going to push the entire bar outward a little bit. We also have this uh, truck bed liner, as seen on TV, and I'm going to spray some of that on the wall before I start, let it harden up, and see how well it holds the sand together. I've had some concerns about my bar support here. Uh, if people rub up against it, it might start flaking off. So we're going to see if a coating of this rubberized stuff will help reinforce that. All right, we're just going to spray the rubberized truck bed liner stuff right here below the no smoking sign. Eventually I'm going to carve out a booth here, but for now this is a wall that I'm not going to touch for a few days. So we'll see how well this stuff sets up and how well it holds the sand together. Well, it sticks to the sand pretty well. I was worried it would just uh, grab the grains and flake off. We'll let this dry for an hour, we'll give it another coat, and then we'll leave it alone for a while and see how it does. So, of course, there's a lot more to Sandland than just my little bar here. Let's take a look at what some of the other folks are working on lately. Here's our main donut room. And each of these little side drifts is eventually going to go to a different room or area. Right now, most of them are just dead ends. Jim's storing his rock collection in this one. It's really easy to get lost in here, which is uh, kind of the point. It's supposed to be very confusing and interesting. Let's see, I think this one is being worked on for part of the Swiss cheese project. Looks like it's getting a little bit lower, but uh, there's quite a bit of tunnel in here right now. And then uh, the other part of the Swiss cheese, Dave is digging out, and he's got a really interesting idea, which I really like a lot. He's doing kind of bubbles in the sandstone. So Dave's doing these little sort of circular rooms that all interconnect, and they're really cool. And uh, I don't want to step on his stuff here. It looks like he's uh, setting up some flex seal of his own. But he's doing this really cool three-dimensional little bubble maze. All kinds of little hidey holes and crevices and directions. This is going to be really cool once it gets farther along. And it's actually pretty far right now. Like, it's already going off in a lot of different directions since the last time I looked at it. And of course, here we have a bunch of sand ready to go up to the surface. And way up there at the top of the hall tunnel, uh, Jim and Brian are putting in some new electrical conduit. So we're updating our electrical system all around in here. All right, second coat. First coat starting to smell pretty bad, so put the respirator on. Another project I'm going to work on today is extending a little utility tunnel that runs off to the side from our main haulage room here. So currently we just have extension cords running off down the drift to the donut room, and this little tunnel would be a shortcut over to the bar area. So I'm going to try to drill this out a little bit more, and then we can uh, push through or drill through a conduit and put some power and air and other utility lines through that. back here at the sandbar. It's actually been uh, a couple weeks. I didn't uh, expect to be gone that long, but let's see how our uh, magic stuff is doing here. It certainly feels like rubber. The sandstone, the raw sandstone can chip away with a fingernail. 
And this stuff is definitely a little stronger. It's definitely easy to chip through that rubberized spray-on layer. Slightly stronger than the raw sandstone. And it would keep it from just, I guess, brushing off the abrasion, but uh, scratching it with any kind of tool definitely eats through that uh, rubberized layer pretty quickly. All right, time to expand behind the bar a little bit. So we've made the ceiling a little bit taller, moved some signs around, added some little army men. Otherwise it's about the same. So I'm thinking this ceiling is now high enough and arched properly. And then like I said, we're gonna just keep pushing the bar that way. All right, so the sandbar is really coming along. In fact, we even have some scrounged beer over here that a friend of mine was able to find for free I still have quite a bit of work to do expanding it out and carving out things like a shelf behind me, some little shelves for trains and whatnot, but um, we'll keep working on all that stuff and more. So I've been working on this bar project for a while. You can see my first video where we started with just an empty tunnel behind me and expanded into the room we're in now. And I started this back during lockdown. Um, now that everyone's had their shots, it's 2021, we can finally get back to normal social activities. Uh, of course, for most of the people I know, normal social activities mean hanging out in a hole in the ground drinking expired beer. Okay. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Oh, shit. Woo -hoo. I appreciate this result. Okay. <laughs> Should we be on? 10-4. Sign it in. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so after another weekend of digging, we've made approximately two more feet of our six foot wide by seven foot tall bar tunnel. Uh, next time I might start carving out a booth over here. I haven't quite decided if I want to start on that now or wait until I have enough linear tunnel to do a second booth, but uh, we'll see what we come up with. Alright, so I'm done digging for the day and I should be taking my tools back up to the surface because it's, uh, it's about 100% humidity down here. Or, at least 90%. You can see all the condensation on the ceiling here. So I don't really want to leave the tools down here overnight or long term. However, we're working on a possible solution for that where we can leave the tools in the tunnel in this waterproof box. I've had the box sitting here for a few weeks now. Um, I've got some uh, water absorbing crystals in there and a sacrificial drill. Oh, that's just an old non-working drill. And then some pieces of paper just to see if they get uh, damp at all. Here's just a piece of paper that's been left in the tunnels, and it's it's very soggy. It's soaking wet, it's falling apart. So that's what would happen uh, to anything left down here long term, unless it's in a waterproof container. So let's pop this thing open and see how our test items are doing. This is just a cheap waterproof case from Axeman Surplus. I don't know what it was for originally, but uh, it was only $30, so way cheaper than a name brand case. Alright, I can see my uh, 
water absorbing crystals have spilled a little bit. They're just in this uh, container. And they have absorbed some water because they are uh, solidified. My piece of paper is perfectly dry. And my sacrificial broken drill does have a little bit of water on it, but uh, there's no rust that I can see. So I think it'd be fine to leave the tools in this box long term, as long as I change out uh, these water absorbers fairly frequently. That's all I've got for this one. Thanks for bearing with me through a little bit of a random video here. Uh, I think this is going to end up being several different videos and several different mini projects for a few months. And then uh, maybe we'll do something a little more cohesive as we uh, get more of the bar area mined out and do some of the decorating. But you'll have to stay tuned for that one because that is a future video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.